Welcome to the Business in Hawaii show. I am John Strandberg, and we are broadcasting live from my office in Waikiki. If you want to tune in, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. While there, please subscribe to our program to get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home in Hawaii. In the Think Tech studios today is my good friend, David Earls. David, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you, John, I appreciate it. Um, not in the studio, obviously, we're all remote today, aren't we? Yes, we are. This COVID-19 crisis has us all working remotely and from everywhere. And that's actually the theme of our show today is how to get the best use of remote workers and how do you work from home or wherever you might be. So, David, before we go on, tell us more about you and your connection to Hawaii, and where are you now? Let's see. Where am I now? Good question. I could be anywhere in the world at the moment, couldn't I? It's kind of fun. Um, I was in Hawaii for 22 years, did a lot of marketing and fundraising work through the, in the nonprofit world. And then a year, a little over a year ago, I had an opportunity to move to Washington, D.C. and work for Adventist Development Relief Agency. It's a church-based humanitarian relief agency. I'm their lead fundraiser. Kind of hard to turn down the opportunity to literally travel the world and raise money for causes throughout the whole world. It was, it's, it's an amazing experience. I still get back to Hawaii often. I miss it when I'm not there. Um, and obviously, we're all working from home these days. So. I've done a lot of different things. Um, at one point, I was the executive director for the Hawaii Meth Project. I ran the Honolulu Zoo Society for a couple of years, done a number of different things along the way. Yeah, I think when I first met you, you were working for Castle, right? Castle Hospital? Correct. As a marketing director? Correct. And we'll take years ago that one. That was a long, long time ago, and we'll move on from there. Yeah, if anybody so, needs anything on our host, just let me know. I've, I've got a couple tidbits I can share. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I got some on YouTube, buddy. Oh, well, let's okay, go back to there. talk about working remote. Um, a few years ago, I remember you were being featured in Pacific Business News as one of the people that pioneered working remote. So can you share with us some tips and tricks when you're doing that back then? Sure. So I got a little obsessed, let's just say, with um, working in a coffee shop environment. Ward Starbucks or Kisaten were my two primary places. Something about that white noise environment, something about having people and activity going on around you and yet not really being bothered by them created, uh, I don't know, creative juices inside me and I was able to really get a lot more done. So in fact, when I was at the Hawaii Meth Project, we had donated space downtown, a nice office space all to ourselves for four staff. And I realized it cost us more in parking fees than what it would cost if I gave every one of our staff $100 gift card every month to Starbucks for internet access and we would do our, our meetings there. And as we traveled the state doing our work, we would just literally meet at the Starbucks in the closest area we were mostly at. And we did that for a number of years. There's probably a 12 year period Starbucks was my primary office as I did consulting and other things. Not just Starbucks, I hope. You mentioned another coffee shop favorite of ours. Oh, Kiss definitely. Kiss. This is true. Starbucks is kind of the one when you can't find a good local one. But of course, in Kailua, you've got Morning Brew. Um, and that was my go-to place there. And then in, in town, Kisaten Cafe was the other one. I really liked that one too. And yeah, PBN did an article on working remote. And they did a wonderful little picture. I don't know how they make pictures of me look good like that, but they did one. There is one floating out there with me holding my little laptop and just doing all the other things you do. The Make sure you've got your hotspot off your phone, all the other pieces you need in order to be able to be completely remote. When you're driving down the road, being able to pull over and still get the emails responded to appropriately, that sort of thing. That was back in that day. Okay, so thinking about that now, we can't exactly go to the coffee shop because we're all stuck. A few of us are actually essential workers. We have to report into an office space or wherever we work. Other, most of us are actually sitting at home now. What, what tips do you have for that home worker that would make it easier to work from home, to stay productive and report in? The first most important tip is wear pants. 
What can I say? Um, <laughs> let's just get it out there. It, it, it's kind of fun. I mean, it, in my job now, I'm very remote often. I last year drove, drove or flew, I should say, I flew 110,000 miles in the air, um, just back and forth across the US a lot, but to Africa, Europe, Asia as well. And we got very used to Zoom meetings. <clears throat> I was introduced to Zoom while working there. I was, Skype was the one you know we all knew growing up, but Zoom has some amazing tools to be able to get people to collaborate together. Um, nowadays, especially in this environment with COVID-19, everyone has heard of Zoom, everybody uses it. Um, it's really interesting though, to watch the change go on in how people perceive what it takes to be ready for a Zoom call. Uh, in the past, you would make sure you put on your shirt with a collar, right? And you'd comb your hair. You'd do all the other things that you needed to do to look presentable. You'd make sure you're in a back wall where nobody could see your, your space. And nowadays, um, I sat on a call yesterday with 108 people in the room in the chat, and you could all communicate with each other. And three quarters of them were obviously sitting on their couch. And another, probably half of them were eating or doing other things. And that's acceptable, at least in today's environment while we're quarantined. I'm curious if that will continue at that level of casualness once we're no longer quarantined. But I, I'm guessing it actually will be acceptable at some level. You know, in, in my past, I've participated in a lot of conference calls where I would be dressed in a shirt, tie, jacket, right. standing up and doing a presentation on a whiteboard. And it's always been, that's how a conference call should be. Right. But you're right. I've been seeing a lot of people recording Zoom calls, and I've seen everything from eating to drinking to driving even <laughs> as they're participating in the call. It's Haven't seen that yet. Casual. Right. Yeah, there's a couple of links I might share with you later that people are doing other things that the net are not appropriate for the show. I've, I've seen those. Just, yes, I have seen those. But yes, uh, they, I'm intrigued. Though. Go ahead. Same time, I'm curious as to how can they prepare? Because you, you, as far as I've known, you've always been prepared for everything. So how did you pre prepare yourself to do this? So probably the most important thing, and it's a real trick, is to make sure your internet is strong enough. Everybody thinks they've got good internet at home, or everybody thinks they, you know, they can just run down the street and grab some Wi-Fi. It's amazing how stressful it is if for some reason that doesn't quite work right. Um, my phone, I'm not allowed to tether off of because we have corporate phones that are actually have international calling. I can go anywhere in the world and be on a phone call all day long. Somehow AT&T doesn't like us tethering that, that as well. So you have to be prepared with some form of a really strong Wi-Fi in order to make that work. I mean, it's basics. That's, that's the number one thing is Wi-Fi. After that, it's make sure your camera isn't all smudged. It's amazing how many people have fingerprints on their computer camera and the the quality of what you're looking at is just really blurry um, clean that off every time before you get on a call before you start talking make sure you've got your cell phone nearby because guaranteed if you're talking with three or four people one of them is going to text you along the way something on the side even though there's really good private chats inside zoom we're still used to using just a regular text message um, at my job we also use whatsapp a lot because it's international and it seems to be used a lot internationally. Every time we gear up for a big group type of a conversation, there's a new WhatsApp group that's created just for the people involved. And sometimes that's not just for this one conference call, this is for a project, something else we're doing. We use WhatsApp as a group messaging service. Um, we haven't used Slack as much as I would like us to, but that, that may be coming. I've used it a couple times here in organizations. And Slack is a great one too. It also integrates well back into the telephone. Um, so it's got the app as well there. But for us right now, we're using WhatsApp as our group text messaging and then Zoom for most of the rest of what we do. I fight hard to keep my computer as super small as I possibly can, travel ready, um, good strong battery, always have an extra battery pack somewhere around, even though rarely nowadays do I run out in one day. Um, you can usually plug in somewhere. The longer cable you got, the better, just to be able to have things always able to move around where you need to with charging. Um, I actually carry with me a double set of every single cable I could imagine in a little Ziploc pack. 
And then that's, I just know it's there, whether I'm going to throw it in a suitcase or whether I'm going to be just sitting at my table. It's just sitting there as an additional, I don't have to go where in the world's that cable because I've always got one extra one sitting in the zippered up little pockets. You know, coming from a guy who's working in the IT industry, that makes a lot of sense. I'm thinking about it too. I have double of everything. One in my briefcase, one at the office, and actually triple, even one at home for most of my cables and charging needs. And how often do you overkill? Not, yeah, and how, how often are you still scrambled to find it though, right? I mean, it, it happens to all of us. But I never thought to keep it near me as I'm working from home. Yep. Because that's a distractions from home are what prevents me, in my opinion, from working at home more. Because I'm thinking, right. oh, there's dirty in the sink. Uh, the dog needs to be fed. The dog needs to get for a walk. Oh, I got food in my refrigerator. What's for lunch? You know, Wait, John. Like that, that... John, I want to back up. You do the dishes? Yes, I do. And <laughs> <here's> the... <laughs> just, just curious. Just checking. I, I caught that. The distractions of day-to-day -day work from home life, how do you keep that from getting into your work? So I, I can't help but have my cell phone beside me, almost in my hand. It bothers me if it's in my pocket. I don't know why. I carry that cell phone around everywhere, and I realize there are people that try to unplug and not do that. I find if I don't respond right away to a message, they pile up and I get behind. And I, I'm the kind of person who would rather just deal with it as it's there and as, as the situation occurs, unless I'm in the middle of a social setting. Um, but my cell phone is always close to me at home, and so... I allow that to come into my home life, but typically when I do real work, that's why I started gravitating towards a coffee shop, somewhere that wasn't home. I also have had a home office before, and if I really needed to do work, I'd go in there and close the door. Whether or not anyone else is home, when I close that door, I'm in a work mode, and that helps me a lot. Yeah, like you have kids, and my kids always tend to bother me at the least opportune time. <laughs> Middle yep. of typing on an email, or I could be on a conference call, and dad, dad, dad. And that's what prompted me to, okay, I'm going to work and staying there for as long as I can. Then when I'm at home, I dedicate it for home. So my girls have learned dad stays away a lot often. But now as they're older out of the house, I find that I don't have as many distractions, but I'm still distracted. And I'm not looking forward to longer days of this quarantine where we're all stuck from home. So my other question is, you have everything you need. You mentioned all your tools are in place. What else can we do to help be more productive at home? Wear pants. I told you that from the beginning. Wear pants. <laughs> so I've heard that you always want to dress up as if you are going to work, even though you're sitting at home. Absolutely and right. I've done that. No, it's funny because, I mean, you see people, and I've seen photos nowadays, people online bragging about their attire to be at work at home. But you're not at work when you do that. And I'm very casual. I enjoy dressing down. But I, too, I often, I mean, I had a polo shirt on earlier today. It just was branded with a logo I didn't want when I did this. So I changed. Um, but I put on something besides a t-shirt when I'm at work, even if it's at the Starbucks or the, wherever I'm going, you know, even in DC for sitting at a coffee shop. Um, I make sure I'm wearing clothing that I feel like is my work clothes. Get in that mindset. Um, answer your phone professionally, even if you know it's your buddy. Make sure that you're in that work mode during the hours you're supposed to be at work. And then when I'm home, if a work call comes in at nine o'clock at night, I may or may not answer it as professionally because that's my way of kind of shutting down some of those thought processes. And of course, if it's somebody important, I'll definitely answer it professionally. But off work hours, I think it's important for all of us to acknowledge even to each other when we're working that this isn't a normal thing to be working during off work hours. Same thing goes the other way around. I think it's important for us to acknowledge during a work day, even if we're on quarantine, that we're at work. So you adhere to your standard work shift, like say eight to five, or it's depending on your business. I, I mean, for me, I come in the office at 7.30 and leave at six o'clock. That's my work hours. Do you say I should do the same at home? During this Friday time, I would. Yes, during this time, I would say yes. 
Yeah, but not normally. I, and it's real different if you're a business owner. If you're the top person in the organization, you're not going to hold business hours. You know that when you wake up in the morning, you've got eight emails you've got to respond to before you crawl out of bed to go shower, to go get a cup of coffee, right? So it's a very different world for those of us who are leading an organization or trying to be taking care of more than just a normal work day. You can't shut off all the time. But I think it's real important for everyone possible to have that balance in their life where they do shut off, whether they leave their phone beside, beside the door, at least, when they go walk the dog. Okay, leave the phone there. And trust me, that's hard. It's not easy to leave the phone, take it out of my hand, and know that it's not going to be there for 45 minutes to an hour. That's not an easy thing. But that's an important part of just keeping your sanity as you go about trying to work in a non-work environment, a traditional work environment. You know, social media is riff with people working from home. I see posts all the time. Prepping for lunch at 9 a.m. A friend right. of mine actually posted that. This She's like, I'm already decided on mac and cheese. It's 9 a.m. for lunch. <laughs> and my response was, I'm jealous, by the way. <laughs> and my response to that was, you know, make sure you had a good bottle of wine to go with that. What are your thoughts on, you know, you're at home and you're on work hours. Is it okay to have that beer at lunch or a martini? Really? Do I have to admit day? this? Are we recording this right now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, from my perspective, I would say as long as you're not on video, do what you want to feel comfortable to keep your sanity, especially during these times. I think if you're not quarantined at home, I would say probably less of that is better. But while you're quarantined, everybody, forgiveness is definitely going to occur everywhere in this world with, with what's going on. And when you're home, you can be at home. Um, we've had some major emails going out to all of us in, inside ADRA telling us, please unplug you guys, because you can see the workflow flying across the ethernet basically all hours of the day and night because you are home and right now everyone is going well i was working during the day i shut it down for an hour at 10 o'clock at night they're opening it again and yet these are line staff who typically would never do such a thing and so it, there is this problem of everyone just feeling they need to stay connected all the time and it's real important you unplug shut off the computer and disappear and i think that's important for managers too to understand you're not always going to be able to reach people immediately like you used to be able to walking around the corner and just saying, hey, Bill, what's what's going on? Because they're not in an office, they're at home. And they may have shut off their computer to eat lunch at three in the afternoon because they didn't at noon. Um, and you need to be able to accept that and maybe text them if you gotta have an answer right away. But other than that, I mean, we've actually got people that are leaving on their Zoom office almost like all day long while they're there and you can just ding them just as if you're around the corner and you say, hey, Carla, are you in the office right now? I, I need to ask a question. And they just answer because Zoom is something you can leave on um, depending on the level of what you've got for uh, an account. And so a number of us during the work day just simply leave it on as a part of what we're doing in the corner of our computer and people could just ding into that chat and continue to work as if you're still connected and you are. And even then, that's an important factor for socialization. I discovered that I'm not a loner. I, I can <laughs> call, but I'm not a How, When did you uh, figure that out, John? Just sitting here alone for a week in the office, and it's like every few minutes, I actually get out, walk outside of my building just to see other people, hopefully walking the streets. Right. Just to go, okay, there's others around me. There, there are people working. And it's just talking to my own workmates. We're, we're, I work in a small company. So after talking to them five times in a day, you almost want to talk to somebody different. Right. And you look forward to that interaction, right? And they do so too, by having, the way. <laughs> <laughs> just having Zoom on almost 24-7 at home, that just seems too excessive. No, no, I'm not have saying 24-7. I'm saying do it like during your office hours. If you're working 7.30 to five, turn it on when you sit down at 7.30. And with Zoom on like that, it's in your own private chat room. They're not instantaneously seeing or talking to you. They're just able to ding you basically. And then you turn them on and say, oh yeah, hi, or not. So leave it on in the corner. I know people that do it and I have a couple times. 
So it's just your office hours when you're available and it makes it only during the day, never at night, never other times. I mean, I'm one of these people that if you text me at three in the morning, I reply. Um, but that's not the norm and that's probably twisted and I probably have extra gray hairs because of it, but it's just who I am. Well, at least you have the gray hair. Mine's going backwards. There, you, I've got plenty. I chop it off often, but yeah, it's real gray. Three kids. Yeah, so we're at home, we're working, we're trying to be as productive as we possibly can. How do you respond to a manager that says, I don't think you're really working and you didn't respond to my text immediately? Because you, you right. did share a little bit of that. Yeah, so there's a few things I would suggest on that because I do have quite a team that I, and they all have different work habits. And some of them I don't, please don't watch this. I hope they're not watching this and won't find it. But yeah, there's a couple I question how much they actually do work, whether that's in the office or whether it's anywhere else. And I'm trying to manage that now. To me, especially now, it's important as a manager to be very, very precise about the expectations of anyone that you're asking to get work done. Find a way to give them a true list of checkoff boxes of here's what I need done and by when. And I mean, we're all humans. We appreciate having some form of accountability. It may be tough at first, because if you haven't had that accountability in the office and you've gotten away with more, coming home, you think you've really got free reign. But in, the, in this environment, and especially anytime you're working remotely, it's really critical that you have clear expectations of what work needs to be accomplished and by when. Um, I think if you've got a job where you're just supposed to be there and keep things moving, you're gonna struggle. But if you've got a job where you've got projects and you know that they're needing to get done, as a manager especially, we'll know whether or not the projects are done, whether they're done right and within a time frame. And you just have to probably in this time just trust your staff a little bit more than usual. I don't think you have much choice. Yeah, well, the government forced us into this with their edicts about stay at home, work from home. But a lot of employers aren't prepared to do that. I mean, I have friends that are teachers. They're preparing lesson plans now right. to teach classes. Right. And a lot of parents, and my neighbors are one of them, are freaking out. It's like, okay. I have to teach my kids how to study and work from home, not in the classroom setting, where I myself have a difficult time with it. And they're asking me, I'm like, hey, don't ask me too many questions. I can help you with the IT side of things, setting it up for you, but it's individuals that have to make that choice. So that leads me to what else can you think of and want to share about working from a non-traditional work environment? I think I've kind of touched on the one of that's to be the most critical is find a space to work in. Don't take that laptop and carry it all over the entire house and work from anywhere and everywhere. Um, especially the couch. I uh, landed the laptop screen on my nose just the other day. Yeah, you sit on your couch, lay on your couch and pretty soon you're chatting and the next thing you know your eyes are closing and it flops over. Um, pick a space that works for you. Set it up comfortably the chair you sit in, you know how we're all ergonomic at work and all of our bosses and all the HR teams come by and check all the time is the counter at the right height. Is that chair working? Is there lumbar support? I guarantee none of us have those things at home. None of us have it set up because we haven't ever had an HR person come to our house and double check the ergonomics of the chair we eat dinner in. And yet I'm currently sitting in the chair I eat dinner in when I'm home. And I'm sitting here talking to you for 30 minutes and not moving other than my head bouncing around, um, probably my lips a little bit. And so it's, you've got to find a way to take care of yourself in that space in ways we don't think of, especially if this is going to go for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, so again, the things that are important are find a space that works for you. Make sure it's comfortable for you. Make it home at the same time. Put the uh, bottle of wine or something across the room as an incentive for when you're done, whatever it takes to be incentivized. Um, but make sure you get in the mindset of what it takes to be able to accomplish the work you need to get done. The Nowadays, all the digital list managers and things, if you're going to be living on a computer more now than ever, um, I use a little app called Moment on my um, phone. And it just kicks up to-do lists for me. And every day it reminds me of the things that I put on the to-do list that typically I add at three in the morning when I wake up. 
and it kicks up in the morning and tells me those things. Something like that that's a new, different reminder. Find one that you just haven't used before. This is the time to test out and see whether it works for you because your workflow is changing. And so now you can disrupt it with a different technology. Try it out. If you're a teacher or a parent, the thing to keep in mind is your kids are ahead of you. I guarantee it no matter what, they're far ahead of you when it comes to how the technology works. So take advantage of that. Take this to be a time for them to teach you the things that they know how to do well. Um, I'll got to admit, I was talking to somebody recently, just last week, who was working on a platform to teach teachers how to teach remotely. And he says, David, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm having to teach teachers how to right click on a mouse. I said, yeah, that's window 95 training, right? To those of us in the world that work every day in tech, that's different. But there are parents and teachers out there that don't ever need to use a computer in their normal life. And all of a sudden, their kids and others are having to do it, and they're having to learn it because we're all locked up at home. So patience is another big piece of all of this, I think, is be aware that you may have employees even who are really good at what they do, but all of a sudden, they're having to learn a different size keyboard at home because you gave them a laptop to go home, and they've got a different keyboard at work. And in fact, it'd be really hard for them to find the exact same one and they didn't grab it before the office was permanently, semi-permanently locked. It feels like permanently forever, we're out of our offices, right? But for some time, they can't go grab that, that keyboard. Patience is an important piece of this as we all learn. So we're running out of time, but really quickly, do you see as us as a business changing our models after this crisis passes? Well, I hope so. Now I realize, staff don't need to be here all the time. I hope so. I mean, there's there's no reason for many of us to drive into work every day, and this is proving it. And if we can somehow find a way in many businesses to stay productive without having to spend all the gas and all the time to drive into work and to drive back home after work and have less of a, a real life, then I really hope this does make a permanent lasting difference in how we do what we do. I mentioned I traveled 110,000 miles in the air. I don't know how much of that I could have done remotely, but I'm sure some, and I'll probably think different about it as whenever we can start flying again, based on the fact technology has changed for all of us. And now it's immediately and all of a sudden much more ubiquitous in our life. Okay. Well, thank you, David. We are out of time. So thank you, thank you. for joining me on the show. Well, a big thank you to the great production staff at Studio doing this via remote control. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please like us, subscribe, and leave a comment, or just email the show at shows at thinktechhawaii.com, and we'll work on getting you on. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you here next week. Aloha.